These are just short little excerpts from these scriptures. Short Peter. <laughs> short Peter. <laughs> okay, 1 Peter chapter 5, starting at verse 6 through 9. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares on upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith. Let me read that again. Whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Verse 10. But the God of all grace, who hath called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you in Jesus' name. Amen. I love that. What I was thinking about was how right now uh, Rashad is at the laundromat. And what I pictured is him casting big old bundle of clothes and tossing it in and like, you you know, like you're playing with your laundry, but you want to get it over with. So you grab a big bundle and you toss it into the laundry bin. And then you take the bin and you roll it over to the big commercial size washer and dryer and you toss it into the washer and dryer. Now, what happens when you toss it, you don't have to do the washing. All you have to do is deposit a few coins, put a little effort in pushing the thing in, pull it out, and the door must be closed, and everything in there, all the detergent, whatever else you're doing, and then the machine does the washing for you. Well, a lot of times when we are to cast our cares on God, no matter what's going on in our lives, we have to learn how to toss. And that's one of the things that's hard for us to do. Because in order to toss, let me demonstrate with this little salt and pepper thing. If I want to toss this, I can't toss it. I can act like I'm tossing it, but it's not going anywhere. You see in my hand? This is called letting go. It's out of my hand. It's not on me anymore. It's not my burden to carry. It's not mine to handle. It's not mine to fix. I've tossed it. I've let it go once and for all. Now, some of you, you let go, and then you go right around that table and you pick it up and hold it again. No, let it go, leave it in God's hands, and trust him with your situation. Trust him with your quandary. Trust him with your fears. Trust him with your burdens. Trust him with your questions, your unanswered questions, your dilemmas, your frustrations. Trust him with it all, casting all your care on him. Why? He cares for you. So remember that as we go into this message. He's in it after all, baby. He's in all of it after all. No matter what, he's all in it. His hands are all in it. Even when you feel like you can't find him, he knows exactly where you are because he's right there in it with you. Amen? All right. So I want you to be encouraged there. Now we're going to move on to another scripture. And we have to, I have to go back a little bit. When it talks about be sober, be vigilant, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Satan cannot devour you unless you give him permission to do so. Are you giving him permission? Hopefully not. Some of us don't realize that we give permission by the things we do and by the things we don't do. Okay, so 
When we give permission, how do we give permission? Mm -hmm. We run to handle, we run to put out fires that are not for us to put out. We're not qualified to put out some of these fires. Only God is. But we try to do it ourselves because we're grown. We know what we see. We know what we hear. And we know how we want the thing to work out. And God is not working fast enough for us. So we take choices and make decisions and handle things ourselves, creating a brush fire rather than hands off and leaving it alone. Cast, cast it all on him, y'all. Whatever it is you're dealing with, cast it all on him. No matter what God allows to go wrong in your life, it always comes together and works for your good. It always does. One way or another, if you don't see a thousand dollar bill come across your hand, guess what? It may be the level of growth that happens in your spirit. It may be an area of maturity, a heightened, a heightened level of discernment. There's always somewhere in your life, whether it's in the tangible form or in the spirit realm, where you prosper some way, you gain from many of your losses. You gain from many of your quandaries. You gain from many of your trials and you gain from many of your failures. You're gonna learn, you're gonna mature, you're going to grow. You're going to see more clearly. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. You can see. Once I was blind, now I see. Higher levels of understanding. That's how God prospers your way. You become rich in mercy, rich in love, rich in patience, rich oh, <laughs> in faith. Because the more you go through, baby, the stronger your faith grows because every time you think it's a lost cause, God comes through and you say, oh my goodness, I, I never saw him coming from that direction. Who knew? He did. His ways are above our ways. His thoughts above our thoughts. So don't get dismayed when you can't see the door, when you don't have the key. And when you don't have the solution or the answer, don't get all misconglomerated. Don't go through that. Fear is not of God. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, let's go to Colossians chapter three. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on earth, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore, verse five, mortify therefore your members, that's the parts of your body, your types of expressions, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For the which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these, listen, anger, wrath, Malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Amen. Verse 10, and have put on the new man, which is renewed <clears throat> in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Amen. Now, I'm going to go to, to verse 12 real quick. Put on, therefore, the elect of God as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, 
meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And verse 14, and I'm done. And above all things, all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Now, these are the things that keep us out of darkness. A lot of times we don't realize even some of the things that we say, we have to be careful when we talk about the leaders of the country. We have to be careful when we see God's judgment coming down the pike. It is not for us to celebrate, you guys. Remember that. Not for us to celebrate. We are, especially with one another, we are to forgive. We are to be patient, long-suffering, and understanding. We must have compassion. Look past our faults and see the needs of each other. Amen. It is good that men dwell together in unity. So, understand how important that is to God. It's very important. So while we're going through this weird stage in these last days, we must cling together like never before. Call each other, pray for each other, sing to each other, read scriptures to each other, send emails with scriptures to lift up one another's spirits, edify, build up, support, amen, encourage. And it'll be a lot easier for us to go through together than it will for us to try to go through this mess all fragmented and separate in spirit. So those are the things we have to understand. We're going through some dark seasons. We're getting ready to go through even darker seasons. But God will shed his light on our darkness, which I say all the time. I know I wear you out with that, but it's the truth. And it's to keep your perspective in the right place. Because God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. So the only way to keep building up that power is mutual support, mutual love mutual prayer. We've got to really cling together going through this. And there may come times when we'll have to congregate somewhere and pool our resources and bring whatever food we have so that we all can have something to eat. Because one or two may have enough, but three or four may not. And they may have a little something that the rest of us don't have. And as we pool all our resources together, we all will have enough. So we have to remember that. It's for you guys on YouTube, especially when you live in close proximity with one another. Remember, you may have to bring your light bulbs, those little battery lit light bulbs, the push button, whatever you have. Bring your batteries. You may have to bring extra electric cords. You may have to bring uh, extra bottles of water. And you guys gather together while someone else may have the bread and someone else may bring the meat or the vegetables or, you know, the carbs, whatever. And you may have to create something out of nothing and ask God to multiply it so that everyone will have more than plenty. And you break bread together in love and in holy communion. Break bread together. We have got to cling to each other going through this. Because let me tell you this, Satan and all his little cohorts, his little witches, warlocks, his little demons, his little imps, whatever, they're always meddling. They're always finagling, trying to scheme their way in to our dreams, trying to wiggle their way into our emotions so they can stir up fear, frustration, anger, impatience. And if they can pull, if uh, listen, if they can yank your chain or my chain, and, or, or if they can, can, can jerk us around and string us along like little puppets, oh, he is more than happy to disturb your peace and mine. But no, it ain't happening. 
I rebuke that. I bind it. I shut it down in the name of Jesus. And you must do the same. Listen, this is what's coming to my mind now. Some of you might be in the kitchen, in your bedroom, on your terrace, sitting in your car. And all of a sudden, whomp, a sudden flood of emotions come over you and overcome you and you're overwhelmed with feelings of depression, feelings of wanting to die, feelings of wanting to run away, feelings of hopelessness. Guess what? Rebuke that crap. There ain't nothing but an attack from the devil. That's not what you're feeling. Those are demons lighting on you like a fly lights on garbage manipulating your thoughts and your emotions. Rebuke them. You'll notice how quickly that feeling came. It's gone just as quickly. You have to do that. When you go through those feelings of being useless, of being worthless, of what's the use? Life is just, life is just full of crap and I'm hopeless. And I, oh, no, 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 no. No, the dialogue, the monologue, the whatever, all that crap comes straight from the pit. Kick it right back to it. Cast all your care on God. Tell him how you feel, but rebuke it. And ask God to lift your spirits and fill you with his joy and peace. Take that crap out of you. See, don't let the devil toss his garbage into your spirit. Don't let the devil blow smoke up your nose. And then it starts contaminating your thoughts. No, don't let the devil do that. These are those kind of days, y'all. He's playing all kind of tricks. Don't do that. God may have to tell you to stop hanging with certain folks to keep that negativity as far away from you as possible. Because there are people that carry familiar spirits just like people out there carrying syphilis germs and cold germs and flu germs and, and, and pneumonia germs and, and, and whatever else they can spread. People, There are many people who are carriers. You do not want a carrier for a friend. And I'm not talking about germs. I'm talking about demonic spirits and influences. You don't want that around you. So whether it means you have to hurt somebody's feelings or just it's, hey, at this point, it's survival of the fittest. You are not obligated to be subjected to the poisons and the contaminants of someone who steadily wants to ride you like you're their pony. No, no. So you have to keep your atmosphere clean. Keep the negatives away. Keep the healthy near, the anointed. Keep your atmosphere filled with praise, worship, things of God. Learn, 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 read, read, pray, pray. Talk on the phone, encourage one another. And get to know everybody in your fellowship. You may be missing out on some jewels by not connecting with them. And don't assume they don't want to be bothered with you. That's another device of the devil. It's called divide and conquer. Don't allow that either. Okay, I know this is kind of a slow, strange word. But I'm not led to holler at you guys like I do sometimes. Okay, we're going to go to Obadiah chapter 1. Now, this is where we have to be careful because there are people that are assignments of the devil and their beam is aimed right between your eyes, right there. Starting at verse 7, this is Obadiah chapter 1. It's only one chapter. Verse 7, starting there. All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. 
They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the mount of Esau? And thy mighty men, O Timon, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob's shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates, and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast as one of them. See, this is to your enemies. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother and the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Listen, God is not happy when we celebrate. Mm, did you see what happened? Oh, that was cold. God got his butt good, didn't he? Ha, 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 ha. You're celebrating. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's the meanest, vilest person in government. When God brings that judgment that he's been talking about all month, basically all year, that he's been talking about, don't you sit there and clap your hands and praise God for it. That's a no-no. God does not want us celebrating anybody's demise, anybody's punishment, anybody's judgment, anybody's calamities. That is a no-no. Doesn't matter if they're your brother in Christ or your enemy in Satan. Don't celebrate it. Be careful with that. There's a spirit in that that God is not happy with. And some of you are going to be tempted when judgment comes and that anvil comes down, that hammer hits, the axe falls on many of those that are in high places. God's going to be watching how each and every one of us responds to that. Pray that they get saved or don't pray at all. But whatever you do, do not celebrate or you can forfeit your own blessings and your own mercies. Be very careful with that. These are really precarious times we're in right now. And we've got to be very careful about how we respond and how we, how we react to the things that are going on. Don't complain. Don't gripe. Don't pity party. And don't celebrate the other one's calamities. Be very careful. Let's go to verse 12. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither should thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Mm -hmm. See, we can be like, uh, like the Levite who was praying that prayer all full of himself. And the Bible didn't say he was praying to God. The Bible said he prayed to himself. While the sinner just beat his chest and said, have mercy, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And the Levite was, yeah, boy, I'm so glad I'm in Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, I pay my tithe. And I go to church and I feed the poor. and I do this and going down the litany of all the wonderful things he does for the Lord. Mm-hmm. I'm all that, y'all, because I'm a child of the Most High King. Can't touch this. Hey, be careful with that attitude. We have to be. Listen, everything that's in our heart. You know, the Bible says, I was talking to Rashad about this. I think Lynette, too. But anyway, there's a thing in the Bible that says, out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. Well, if I put my spin on it, Pat's two cents on that, I would say out of the abundance of your heart, the brain thinketh. 
Yeah, that's where them little nasty thoughts come from, from a nasty heart. So when you find yourself thinking those nasty thoughts, ask God to cleanse your spirit right there on the spot. Lord, forgive me for thinking that. Yes, I was enjoying it. Yes, I was feeling mighty spiteful and vengeful. But Lord, I know you, you're not pleased with it. So I'm asking you to forgive me and cleanse me of that. Take the anger out of me that makes me want to see payday. Take the hatred and the resentment, the bitterness out of me that makes me want to see somebody get their behind raked through the cold. I want to see that. No, help me not want to see that. Help me not rejoice in that. See, this is where we have to watch our spirits. We're so busy looking at what this one's doing wrong and what that group is doing wrong and how they're screwing over the people and all these different things they're forcing on people, the oppression and the lies and the misrepresentations and the, and the propaganda. We're looking at all that and it, it ticks us off, doesn't it? Yeah. You are not to sit there waiting with bated breath to watch God put fire on their behinds. Yeah, you're going to get yours, buddy. No, not the right attitude. That's not love. Even Jesus said, love your enemy. That's hard. That's hard. It's going to be a whole lot harder in these last days because a lot of your enemies, even some of your friends, some of your family members are going to turn your behind in. If they start asking for folks to do that, they'll be ready, willing, and able, eager beaver, to turn your behind in. You cannot afford to resent them, be angry with them, be bitter towards them. God's going to punish you for doing that to me. No, you can't go there. You have to keep your spirit clean because when Jesus busts the clouds, baby, he's not just going to deal with what you said. He's not just going to deal with what you did. He's going to deal with what you felt and what you thought. So you have to keep your spirit clean, clean, squeaky clean. Holy Ghost bleach must keep you purified, baby. Or else you can slip so easily in your flesh. And you can start looking at people out the corner of your eye. Look at that. Look at that. Uh-huh. I knew that was going to happen. Check that out. <laughs> High five, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Let me turn the volume up. I got to hear this. Be careful with that. Be careful. That self-righteousness, that's a sin as well. Be careful. Humble yourself. Be very careful about your attitudes. Those are the little, the little foxes that spoil the vine. That's the little stuff that we look over. I got a right to be happy. It's about time they get their come up and sure, look at that. No, uh-uh. Watch your attitude in these last days, y'all. You have got to go over yourself with a fine tooth comb. Do not make allowances. Because you have been abused here and you've been mistreated there and you've been forsaken and abandoned over there. Be very careful. I don't care what they take from you. I don't care who in your family they choose to kill or persecute. I don't care if they put you in jail unworthily. Watch your attitude in these last days. And watch your mouth. You got to be careful with that. You got to watch every little thing. Do not allow one crumb from the enemy's table to enter into your body, enter your spirit, enter your thoughts. No. Cuss words, not, nope, nope, not in your vocabulary. No SH, no FUC, you know where I'm going with that. No MFs, no BITs. I'm not spelling it all out, but you know what they're going to say. 
And you got to watch that because one thing you don't want to do is yoke up with the devil. You're yoking with the devil when you use his language. That's not God's language. You know you would never say that in God's presence. So why do you say it at all? If you can spend all day at a job site and not utter one mumbling cuss word, why must you have the can't help it when you're at home in your own domain? If you can use restraint over there, you can use restraint 24-7 for God's sake, not for your job's sake, for God's sake. That's where, that's the reason you use restraint. You want everything coming out of your mouth to be holy and edifying, full of love, not full of hate, wrath, resentment, bitterness, cursing. You don't want that in your mouth. The Bible says in James 3, how can you bless God and curse man? How can you do that? So everything we're dealing with right now, we've been focusing, looking out. Ooh, look what's happening over there. Look at that fire over there. Look at that volcano over there. Look at that flood over there. Look at that earthquake over here. And God's saying, uh-uh. Get the mirror right here and look in here. That's what I want you looking at. You got work to do. You're so busy looking out there, you're not paying attention to what's happening in here. Satan steadily tossing his little crumbs and his garbage in you. But you're so busy looking, gawking, and skulking that you forget that you got to keep your house clean. You got to keep your spirit clean. You got to keep your attitude clean. You got to keep your language clean. All through this. See, this is the fine tooth stuff. This is called be ye holy for I am holy. Why? Because God is going to bust those clouds soon. When he busts the clouds, he doesn't want to find any dot or wrinkle in you. You want to be able to say Satan came, but he found nothing in me. You want to be able to say, Lord, search my heart and see if there be any wicked way in me. You want to constantly ask God to cleanse and purge, wash you, make you clean. What does Isaiah 1 say? Wash you, make you clean. Come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. See, you're looking at the big sins, the rape, the molestation, human trafficking, getting drunk, getting and beat up uh, brows at, at the club, uh, going to jail, doing all kind of paying fines, doing all kind of things doing all kind of illegal activity. No, what God's looking at also, he wants those of you who are not involved in all that, he wants those of you to look deep in your heart. Because what's hidden is what's going to hinder you from going up during the time of the snatching up. You will be sitting on the ground crying in your own self-pity, wallowing in it. Because you can't understand why God left you. One's grinding at the mill and the other one, the two women grinding at the mill. One is taken, the other left. What's going to cause some of you to be left? It may not be getting drunk all night and, 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 uh, and committing fornication left and right. And maybe what's hidden behind that door in your chest. What's hidden between those two ears in your head? What flies out of your mouth from the abundance of your heart? Mm -hmm. See, these are the things we have to be careful of. We can point the finger all day long about all the injustices and all the oppression, which we do. We have to be aware of. We pray against it. We take authority over it. But don't forget to take authority over me, myself, and I, over you and yourself, over your spirit. Don't forget to take authority because God is not going to cohabit with your sins. I don't care how much he loves you. He's not going to allow the Holy Spirit and the devil to live together in one little happy home. It ain't going to happen. So choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, 
I will serve the Lord. Amen. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Don't be stressed. Cast all your care on him. No matter what's going on, don't get caught up in the frenzy and become reactionary and your mouth is flying off it, flying off the handle. No, keep yourself under self-control. That's one of the uh one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is self-control called temperance. You temper that bad boy. Jack tries to jump out the box, slam that box down, said, no, not today. I rebuke me. I'm not only going to rebuke Satan, I'm going to rebuke me in the name of Jesus. I rebuke my foul attitude in the name of Jesus. God, please cleanse my heart and forgive me in Jesus' name. God bless you as you draw near. As you try to live as holy as possible, just remember, go through your spirit with a fine tooth comb. Don't make allowances. Don't make excuses. Amen. And don't make excuses for each other. God bless you. <laughs>